A fake police officer stole all the money out of my wife's account and they demanded all the money out of my account. But before I get into this crazy, crazy story, I would actually first like to thank the Real Thai Royal Police Department. We went to two separate police stations, actually three visits all together. And all I can say is looking in, you all were super amazingly professional. How you listened to my wife talk, even though I can't speak Thai, I could see compassion in detectives' eyes. They were sitting around, they wanted to hear this story too, on how the heck did this happen? And so as a foreigner looking in, all I can say is thank you so much to the Chiang Mai Police Department. I would like just to thank you all, and to the Cyber Crimes Division in the Chiang Mai Police Station, thank you so much again. And uh, all I can say is I, I was really, really impressed what I saw and how you handled everything. So thank you again. And let me start the story. So this crazy story starts with my back is just killing me. And so I say, you know what, I'm going to go get a back massage. Would you like to come? And my wife said, you know, what? honestly, I just want to chill on the couch. Just go for it. And I said, OK, I'll be back in one hour. What's crazy about this is Normally, me and my wife, the last year, were together 99% of the time. For us to even be apart for one hour is kind of crazy to begin with. But it, it does happen, but it's on the rare side, too. So I just want to give you my mindset. When I'm going to leave my wife for one hour, how the scam just goes down. So I leave her. I say, yep, be back in one hour. Great. We say goodbye. And I come back an hour later thinking my wife's just going to be sitting on the couch. Everything is great. But I open that door. My wife is in a panic. She's almost on the brink. She's crying. She's upset. She's grabbing me. She's saying we have to go to the police department. We have to go right now. And we have to get a taxi. We have to go. Just like Let's go. We have to go. And I'm so confused. I'm like, okay, we can go to the police department. Can you tell me what's going on? And she's grabbing a hold of me. And I can tell she's in a lot of distress. And I thought, did somebody attack you when I was gone? What the heck happened here? And my wife's English, we're still really, really working on it. So normally she uses a few words at a time and not complete sentences to talk. But I do understand things like, please, let's go to the taxi. And she showed me her bank account and it's showing zero, zero dollars right now. And I think one of the first things that came to my mind, did somebody break in and assault you? What's going on? And like 100%, yes, we're getting to the police department. Can you tell me what's going on though? Like I'm dying, like what the heck's happening now? Ooh, I, my mind is just racing all over this point, just looking at her face and how freaked out she is. And she told me that 191 called her. And if you don't know what 191 is, it's the traffic police in Thailand called my wife. And if you don't know, that's the emergency, uh, you know, police department. 191 is a traffic police, such as in the United States, it's like 911. And I've had 911 call me. I've accidentally pocket dialed them, I think, twice in my life. They call you right back. You answer it. You tell them everything's fine. Everything's good. So I'm like, OK, so the 191 called you. They didn't just call you. They video called you. And my wife answers his video call from 191, and it was a Royal Thai police uniform, a man dressed up in a police uniform on the call with my wife, a video call. And this to me is just incredible that somebody would be this ballsy to actually show their face on video. So we have a Royal Thai police uniform on, and this guy is telling my wife that you're in a lot of trouble. You committed, I, and again, this is her broken English, so I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but you committed bank fraud and millions of dollars, uh, millions of bot and bank fraud. And they're going to be coming to arrest you any moment. He's getting ready. He's going to have his police officers come. They're going to storm in. Not going to see your husband again. Not going to see your family again. Your whole life is officially over. So he already has my wife completely freaked out. And he said, gave her an ultimatum. How much money do you have in your bank account right now? I can try to help you avoid all this jail time, but you're going to have to help me first. And she said, at this moment, I have, you know, 2000 bot in my bank account, which is about 60 US dollars. And this is the crazy part. I, we're about to buy a truck 
And I was less than 24 hours from transferring a ridiculous amount, a large lump sum to my wife's bank account. And this is where this gets really, really crazy, where my first instinct was, did they know I was about to? Because I almost did it before the back massage. I almost transferred because the very next day we're buying a truck and we're putting a large amount down on this truck. And uh, so my wife was almost about to have access to all this money. The officer, the fake, I should not be saying officer because he was a fake police officer, was saying that we know you are married and we know you're married to a Falong, which Falong is a, a foreigner. And uh, we want access to his bank account. And if you don't give us the access to his bank account, you're going to jail and you're not gonna see your family again. You're not gonna see your husband again. And at the moment there, I have my phone. So even if she had access to it, she needs my phone. And I don't know, she can't do it on her phone. She, she wouldn't know the passwords and everything like that. It would just not be possible. And she didn't explain this to me, but I'm pretty sure she had to explain it to them. Like, listen, yes, everything like, just wait till my husband gets home. This is what I'm assuming she's saying at this point. Wait, he's gonna get home. He's, he's only gone for this one hour. <laughs> he's gonna be back. He's, yeah, and everything will be okay. Just, can you just wait this hour? And um, again, this is me actually now just completely what I'm thinking is in her mind uh, at this part right here, because when I show up, I look at the phone blocked. Everything is blocked. They cut it. So they didn't wait for me. They didn't wait just maybe 30 more minutes, maybe 20 more minutes when they first started the scam or when the scam started. They didn't wait for me. They didn't try the scam on me. They tried it on my wife. I need to be very, very clear. When 191 called, they didn't call directly from the phone. They used a software app called Line. If you don't know what Line is, it's, it's similar to WhatsApp or Messenger. Ties use it all the time. I interact with Ties. We don't just directly call each other. We tend to use Line. And yes, it's just an app we use. And I think it's just, it saves everybody money. So when 191 called, they actually were calling from an app. And that's how they were able to spoof the Thai police. They weren't the real Thai police. They were spoofing the 191 number. They just changed their name to 191 and they were calling from line. And then the time within this hour, the time I got back, they sent her the text they sent her, the video call they sent her, everything was delete, 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 delete. They blocked her, gone, ghost, disappeared. I'm assuming they broke the phone, probably a burner phone. And the scam, all they got was 60 bucks out of it, but they almost got so much more. And I'm very, very disappointed. They did not wait for me. I would have definitely, on my phone, I have an iPhone, you could have just captured the image. I would have loved to have had the person's image because that would give the police such a leg to work on because there's no way a real Thai royal policeman would actually risk his whole career over this. And they didn't get the big money here. They only got the 60 US dollars from my wife. And yeah, there's no way a real Thai royal, I'm just saying it right here, 99%, no way a real Thai royal police officer would risk his job, his whole career, his livelihood to try this. There's just so many ways your face can get recognized and so bold, so arrogant to show your face on a video, especially with most modern phones, you can take uh, capture a, your picture on it. I don't think my wife's phone, she has an older phone, unfortunately, now we're, we're gonna upgrade it. Uh, but she didn't have that technology where she could take a screenshot and get the person's face, unfortunately. And that would have really helped the real Thai Royal Police investigate this further. Now, I can say again, this is me getting it from a third-hand account. And remember the language barrier, what the investigators are thinking, what happened. And they were trying to trace it back to, we used Shopee, which if you don't know what Shopee is, it's like the Amazon of Thailand. You order it to get packages in a few days, but sometimes we order things from China. And the investigators were actually thinking this scam, actually, again, 
maybe this has happened more than once, that it's actually a Chinese mafia scam. And when you're thinking of Chinese mafia, I'm thinking of the Chinese triad more accurately. And I'm thinking of Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker, and Rush Hour, if you've seen those movies back in the day, super entertaining. But yes, an organized crime that does this, and they want to use probably a nobody's face. Because again, you don't want somebody, you want somebody who's gonna do this scam, they have nothing to lose. Because once your picture is impersonating a police officer, the real Thai royal police do not take kindly to this. And all I could think in my head, and maybe a few other people in the psychology field are probably thinking the same thing, the Milgram experiments, right? An authority figure getting control and getting somebody to do something completely insane. And if you don't know what the Milgram is, the quickest quickest background possible I can get is the dude said that he can get majority of US citizens to kill other US citizens if he just wore a lab coat and told them to. So he tricked them into thinking they were killing other US citizens just because a guy in a lab coat, an authority figure told them, you should do it. You should definitely do it. And uh, when Milgram, before he did this experiments, everybody said, no, people won't do that. They won't just obey an authority figure to murder somebody else. Well, Milgram Pro uh, showed that majority of US citizens would do that. Uh, today, modern times, they ban those experiments because that's psychologically damaging. Even if the person who pretends to die is an actor, it's still psychologically damaging. But these type of things go on in the United States all the time. Uh, one guy, he pretended he called up, he said he was a fireman. He said that if you do not break all the windows in this Burger King, that the Burger King is going to explode. There's a massive gas leak going on. You're going to save everybody if you can break those windows. You have no time to react. And of course, you can just type Burger King, probably gas leak windows broken into Google. You can see these images, it's crazy. Other sad things is a guy posed as a police officer in a McDonald's and he actually victimized, sodomized a woman, just a young employee, just got completely destroyed because the other workers, the manager believed that the person on the phone was a police officer telling her to do these horrible things, to strip search her, to abuse her, everything because she's a criminal. Uh, that's again, another story that's uh, they even made a movie about it. This almost could have destroyed our entire relationship is because I was about to hand my wife a ton of money. And those scammers were honestly this close, this close to getting all that money. And if they got that money, I don't know, like, that would have put a huge damper. Again, we're now coming up, getting closer to two years together. But uh, yeah, this was a big thing that I was going to trust my wife for the first time with a large sum of money. And this truck we were saving up for a long time to get. And yes, this was going to change. This was going to be the game changer for our whole like upcoming relationship, what we we're going to do. And if we lost that deposit, we could not have gotten the down payment. We could not have walked away with the truck. Uh, we would have lost the truck and it, all our plans, everything would have just been yeah, all gone right there. We'd have to start completely all over. And I, I think I would have quickly realized uh, immediately that, you know, it was a mistake. And Anne's not just my wife. When I say you get married, you're also marrying your partner, a business partner. You're supposed to help each other grow and become more successful and everything. So if I trusted my business partner with a large sum of money, we're going to buy a truck and my business partner lost it all instantly. The very first time we did this, yeah, I, I don't know, like it would have put a huge, you know, knife into our relationship. Let's say that, of course, you can pull out a knife, you can heal it, you can do everything, uh, you could work at rebuilding. And again, I saw my wife's face. I knew her panic in her eyes that night that she was terrified. There for a while, she thought she was going to gel. So these scammers almost did that to our relationship. And again, I think we could have healed and we could have recovered from it. And at least that's what I'm hoping. I'd like to think optimistically, but yeah, that definitely, as you can see, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. That can definitely put a damper on your relationship. Any partnership you have yeah, it can hurt. I hope everybody enjoyed this story. It's definitely a really crazy story. I'd like to thank my wife, especially for letting me share it. And uh, I hope this helps others. And I hope everybody walks away just a little bit smarter and don't get scammed. And I'm sure we, we all get scammed. It, it happens all the time. So if you do, don't feel bad about it. Just get up, keep walking. You got it. But comment down below, what do you think? Do you think that it was random 
uh, people from maybe that they got our information from Shopee. They got our phone number or our address, everything from Shopee. Maybe they cased out the place. Maybe they thought they were a big score. Maybe nothing was related to do with the car. Maybe they had no clue I was about to give a major um, amount of money to my wife. Uh, maybe one of the workers saw that I left at the time where we were living. There was two security guards that saw I left. There was uh, um, the workers downstairs, a couple of those two saw I left, but I don't think they had access to our phone number. So I, I hard to imagine that any of them, and yeah, I, I didn't get that vibe that they were like working with the Chinese triad or another organized crime organization. And yeah, they were gonna pull this off or that they even knew we were gonna buy a truck. So yeah, I, I don't know, but comment down below if you want to jump in on it and uh, have you ever had this? Has anything ever happened to you? Have you been scammed? I think we all at this point in our life, uh, scammers are everywhere online. So just be really, really cautious, be really, really safe. Everybody stay safe out there. And thank you so much for listening to this story. Love you all, bye.